Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the one secret to building a successful, love-filled relationship. So whether you're married, you're in a dating relationship, or you're still just a single Pringle looking for the other side of your Oreo, this video is for you and it's gonna cover the one tip to help you build a successful relationship. Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. Now, before I jump into the good stuff, before I jump into telling you that one tip, that one key to building a successful marriage, dating, or future relationship, I wanna give you a little bit of backstory on my own relationship. My wife and I, we have been married for six years, and we've been dating for coming up on 13 years, the 26th of this month, actually. My wife and I, we started dating in eighth grade. We've been together for a long time, but I absolutely love her and we are just absolutely perfect together. Now, I will not say that our relationship has always been perfect. In fact, in our early years and in our early year of marriage, you know, we had some rough moments and we had some rough times, but it's in these last few years that I've truly found the key to a successful relationship. In the last few years, our relationship our marriage has just gotten so much better. And I wanna share that one tip with you, the one thing that I think made the biggest difference that took us from being you know, broken people hurting each other to broken people loving each other and doing this thing we call life together. So if you wanna know what that tip is, here it is. So the one key, the one thing that completely changed and redefined my relationship with my wife was in the last five years that we grew closer to God. Now, while we were dating, I was not a Christian, and she was, but you know, I messed everything up. But I was not a Christian, so we did not lead our relationship like someone who follows God. And that, that tore us apart. We did break up, and, and it did break us. Now, thank heaven that you know we got back together because I can assure you if it's not for that amazing woman that I would not be where I am today. I would not have this relationship I have with God. I would not have this platform that God has given me if it had not been for her. I truly believe that God used her to make me who I am today. I like to think about a relationship sort of like this cord right here. Now I don't know how well you can see it but this is a braided cord and this cord is not made up of just two strands but instead it is made up of three. And we often think about a relationship as only being made up of two strands, you know, the, the man and woman, right? We, we only think of it being made up as two strands, the bride and groom, right? But you see in Ecclesiastes 4.12, it says that a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. You see, our relationship cannot simply be two cords because that is too easily broken and I think that's why we see so many relationships split up. But a relationship has to be made up of three cords. The man, the woman, and Jesus at the core. You see, to build this relationship that will be successful, that cannot be broken, that can, that can withstand every single trial and tribulation, to build that kind of relationship, you need to have a relationship built on the foundations of Jesus. You can't just have Jesus to be a part of the relationship. Instead, Jesus needs to be interwoven into every aspect of the relationship. That Jesus needs to be at the very core. That Jesus has to be that fundamental aspect that you build the relationship around. That He is as much a part of that relationship. He is as fundamental to that relationship as the man or the woman is. It is then that you will build a successful, hope-filled, strength-filled, unbreakable relationship when Jesus is built at the core. Now, I'm not saying that when you make Jesus the center of your relationship, I'm not saying that you'll never go through a trial, that you'll never have an argument, that you'll never have a fight. My wife and I can both attest that that's not true. But you will be able to overcome because you will be building, you will be overcoming not with the own strength of two broken people, but you will be overcoming with the strength of Jesus at the core of your marriage. And when you bring Jesus into every single aspect of your marriage, when you bring Jesus into your decisions, when you bring Jesus into your actions, when you bring Jesus into your respect, when you bring Jesus into your words, when you bring Jesus into your parenting, when Jesus is building and contributing to every aspect of your relationship, you are building on the strength and the foundation of Him, and He can get you through everything. We often quote 1 Corinthians 13, and it says this, 
Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Now, I'm sure we've all heard that verse, but tell me, does any aspect of that verse sound like a human relationship? In your relationship, can you say that you are always patient, that you are always kind, can you say that you do not envy? Can you say that you are not proud? Can you say that you always trust, that you always hope, that you always persevere? Can you say any of those things are true about your current relationship? I've been with my wife for 13 years. I've been loving that woman for 13 years and I can tell you not a single one of those are always true for me. However, when we build on the foundations of Jesus, when we have the kind of love that Jesus pours into us, the kind of love that Jesus showed to us, and we build on that foundation, that these things can be true because we're no longer loving with our own ability to love, but we are loving with the ability of Jesus to love our spouse. And we love our spouse, we love our partner through the eyes of Jesus, then oh, we have such a different relationship than simply two broken people trying to love each other out of their own will. When we love each other through the eyes of Jesus, when we bring Jesus, when we bring the Word of God, when we bring prayer into our relationship, we are building something amazing. It is truly then that two will become one flesh when we build our relationship on the foundations of Jesus. That is my one thing is don't be a two-strand braided cord. Bring Jesus in, but don't just let Jesus be a part. Make Jesus the central theme of your marriage. Make Jesus the very core of your marriage. Jesus must be as fundamental to your relationship as you are. That is the one life-changing, relationship-changing thing that I can tell you, and it has truly made a difference in my relationship. So what I encourage you today go out and make Jesus the central theme to your relationship. If you're not in a relationship yet, make Jesus the central theme to your singleness. And then it'll flow on over into your relationship when it is to come. Maybe Jesus is waiting for you to live right in your singleness before he wants you to live right in your relationships. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it spoke to you. If it did, leave me a comment down below. Let me know you just loved it. You know, let me know how long you've been with your partner or what you're looking for in your future partner. All right, I release content just like this every single week, so go ahead and slap that subscribe button. All right, love you guys. Keep living that bold life.